I am so glad to see these folks back. They've been gone so long that it's, it's see, and it, that it's really hasn't been that long, but it seems that they've been gone so long that in my mind, I had actually given everybody a clean slate. And I'm like, come on through, cook, yeah. I want to put my soap on, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is Married to Medicine Season 4, and it's Episode 1. Like I was saying, in my mind, I had literally given everybody a clean slate to start from because it's been a while since we've seen them. Honey, let me tell you something. That didn't last very long. Everything is as it was, honey. I still live for Queen Q, honey. Miss Quad, Miss Quad, Miss Quad, honey, y'all know I still, I live for Quad. I still love Jackie and Kurt, Curtis. I still um, can't stand Heavenly. Lisa Nicole Cloud is still a waste of time and skin. Darren is still shifty in my eyes. Um, Toya, <laughs> bitch, whatever. Um... <laughs> And y'all know I absolutely live for Simone. And I actually live for Cecil. Um, Eugene. You know, I used to kind of rap for you, Eugene. But um, we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anyway, starting off, Quad done went home to Memphis. And then come back, child, and she's so silly, because I've seen that interview um, earlier today before the show even aired. I've seen the interview where she was talking a little bit, and the interviewer asked her something about a baby. You know, we're always on her and this baby thing, and she's like, child, you never know, honey. There may be a baby around, honey. You never know. You ain't seen me in a while. Well, sure enough, Quad's in there cooking, and in stumbles. This little cute little baby. <laughs> I swear, who the fuck's baby is that? Because I know good and goddamn well that that ain't Quad's baby because I know good and well she ain't stumbled around and I ain't seen a picture of her with her belly and stuff out because I know good and well Queen Q, if she, whenever and if ever she does decide to have a baby, we're going to get all the cute pictures, the pictures with the belly out, with the fierce gown on, with the belly cut out. We're going to have all of that because she's that bitch. So we ain't sat and missed the whole pregnancy of Quad being contoured out of her mind in maternity wear. Child, it ain't happened. But cute little baby, he come bopping through there, child. I said, well, look at here. Here is her nephew. So she got a baby. There's a baby in the house. And I just laughed because I think Eugene was just tickled pink with the fact of him being there. It's Quad's brother's child. And I laughed because he really, Quad's brother looks like a, a male version of Quad. And, and I was like, well, check him out. I said, okay. Um, he's a good looking little fella. And um, he's there. And then his girlfriend, I, I don't think she's his wife. I think it's his girlfriend. However, who cares? Whatever, who cares? But she comes out, she went home to Memphis to visit or whatever, and he was in a job that kind of wasn't moving anywhere. Now, I hope everybody was paying attention. Don't start their bullshit. He had a job. He wasn't nowhere sitting being a bum. She said very clearly that the young man had a job, but it was a dead-end job. It wasn't going anywhere. And then the woman, something had happened with her job, so she wasn't working so Quad scooped him up how family is actually supposed to, to be and told him, you're done here. You you just relocated. And they took him on down to Atlanta with him. And they're going to get a fresh start and get things going on. I said, and that's what's up. And I heard her in her interview, she was saying, you're going to get to see the family side of me doing what families do. 
Yes, indeed. Come on through, Quad. So I said, all right. So that was cool. I mean, and everybody don't have that in their family. Trust me. If my ass is running into a dead end, I ain't got a family member that will scoop me up and take me no motherfucking way or job. We ain't even going to go into that today. But um, anyway, yeah, I ain't even going to get up on the soapbox. I'm not going to do it. And, you know, that's vice versa. Because I ain't got a family member that I will scoop and take to the motherfucking corner store. Good evening. Um, anyhow, so they're staying at the house and Chloe and Kari was running around. They was doing their thing. Everybody was cool and happy. The baby broke one uh Kwa's good motherfucking plates. <laughs> and she didn't even get mad. Didn't even get mad. She was saying, You gonna pay me back? No, I ain't gonna pay you back. <laughs> he gonna break the one step match. Because that's what they do. But anyway, so I laughed at that. Jackie and Curtis that moved out, they just sold their house and they done moved. So they're staying at an apartment or whatever. So Jackie is getting kind of used to, you know, she said it took a minute to get used to the fact that she just sees them all the time now because, you know, the space is limited as to where they used to be. She's like, I just see him all the time. But um, Jackie's getting used to the thing of downsizing and she was talking about going into a high rise you know and living in a city and Curtis ain't really feeling that shit Curtis is more like nah I still would rather live in the suburbs and get a new house so they just kind of going back and forth I have a feeling that Curtis is going to win though I, I just don't see it I don't think you're going to be moving into the city no time soon Miss Jackie I think you're going to end up in another house baby just don't worry about that he's too big of a man to be trying to live in a high rise you see how big he is like when he's standing next to Jackie he's huge Mr. Curtis is huge he's like really tall I can't even see him living in no high rise no where y'all get that man a house he needs ceiling space he don't need to be nowhere getting older and forgetting to duck down and banging his head on the goddamn uh on the overhangs and stuff child get that man a house um next we got Eugene and Toya first they weren't getting on my nerves okay Toya wasn't getting on my nerves at first we see her, we found her, you know, seeing the kids, the kids is getting, they're getting bigger. You know, they got cute kids. Their kids are adorable. Bad in the motherfucker, but they, they're adorable. And I still see, they still being bad, child. They was running around that motherfucker. She said, they're mischievous now, but your kids are bad. They were still running around, carrying on, which was cool. And um, she started talking about the fact that she's having these problems with taxes. I said, okay. Some reason, Toya, you supposed to be on top of different financial things and all that, but you ain't paid attention. And now y'all owe three years worth of taxes. Tell me what you're in upwards of a hundred and seventy thousand dollars in debt to the IRS girl. Lord have mercy, honey. You are one slide, honey, from going down to Mrs. Further's just finishing school for girls, honey. Both of y'all. I said, that's a mess. Um, a mess. But I think they'll be able to fix it and everything because now Nomad, that little business that they had going, they actually have an actual office space now. So I think that's going to help with their business, especially with what they're doing. I don't know how he ever thought, how you thought that was going to work out as a door-to-door -door type of situation. It it looks and sounds better in an actual space where everything is set where it's supposed to be. You got Ivy poles and shit. You be dragging Ivy poles out of no goddamn car trying to hook nobody up and all that kind of shit. So I think they're going to be okay. Um, Hopefully. And if not, then they'll be at the down to the hoose gal, honey. That'll be fine. Anyway, now we got Heavenly and Lisa hanging out together. So now I don't hate Lisa. I just think she's stupid. Heavenly, y'all know I can't stand. At first I thought I was like, okay, well let's see. Let's see. Heavenly was looking good. Honey, Heavenly got her got her a glam team. That bitch got her makeup together. Her hair is nice. She ain't on fleek. But the bitch, she, she's together. She done lost some weight. And she looks great. She had this really pretty um, electric blue 
uh, outfit on when she was with Lisa. It looked good. It was it was really really it was nice. It was nice and it was looking nice on her color and everything. I was like, I had on uh, heavenly, but that bitch was steadily throwing shade, Joe. Throw a shade, because that's what she does. Lisa and her were going to see Jackie. And you know, Heavenly don't even do Jackie. Here they go. They're going to Jackie's office. Lisa done got in her mind that she wants to have a baby. Storyline. That's all. Because I can't even imagine why you would want to have a baby. You 105 years old, bitch. And all of the past shit, you you run around. You got this man that, that cheats at will. He doesn't listen. He doesn't do what he's supposed to do. You found out last season that you had a motherfucking uh, husband-in-law. You know, all this shit going on. Now you want to convince us that you want to have another baby by Darren. You ought not even want to sleep with Darren without a motherfucking condom. Let's alone lay up and get knocked up by Darren. But whatever. Whatever. So they go in. Jackie fills her all in on everything. First of all, you're an old bitch. Second of all, you go through, you have this whole situation about blood clots. And that was it. From everything else didn't even make no difference. When she told her there's a, a risk that you could get a blood clot while you trying to have this baby and we get the baby here, but you don't be here. Ain't no more discussion. I see it in the discussion, bitch. It's different if you don't have any children and you're willing to take that risk, but you have two children. Two. You got two kids that done already made it, bitch. You were cool. Two times God let you slide. Do you, and now you want to gamble. You want to try three times. You ain't never heard of three strikes and you're out, bitch. Literally. Whatever. Whatever. But she's like, I don't know. You know, she want to drop a tear here and I want to do it. I want to have. Go ahead on. Go ahead. She goes straight from that to how she does. She want to have a party to celebrate the fact that she's going on a suicide mission. Hey, whatever. That motherfucking heaven, that's what I said. She still got them shady. She had the nerve. See, a real girlfriend would not throw daggers and bring up old past shit in front of people, especially not on camera. That motherfucking heavenly asked her just as nice. Well, girl, I mean, you know, so is you going to get Darren checked out? Because, I mean, now you, you didn't get checked out you will get there and check out because he ain't had no kids lately, have he? I said, that bitch tries it. She tries it. Trying it, honey. So I said, okay, a mess. Let's move on. Simone and Cecil. Now this is where you live in here. Because we already know we remember when Simone was having some little financial situation and they weren't really all that big. It was kind of like money that was, it was, it was an issue about her, uh, invoices and, and the payments being run. The money was there, but it was, it wasn't getting transferred like it was supposed to. So that was the issue. She ain't never stopped making money. Um, but Simone's all right. Simone and Cecil done bought another house. Come on through. Closer to where the kids' at school is because the commute from their house to the kids' at school was a, an hour each way, each day. So they done bought another house. And Cecil's over there with two boys. And sometimes Simone's back at the other house by herself. It just depends on what her work schedule is doing. So she's the traveling the traveling check. And um, I just think that's fabulous. It's fabulous. I mean, to have two houses, two mortgages and all, that's a lot. It's a lot. Um, most people would have to just go ahead and make the sacrifice for however many years they have with the kids 
But to be able to be in a financial position to say, fuck it, we'll just buy another house closer and we'll just have these two. Child, hats off to you. I think it's the shit. That's living. That's how you're supposed to live. You're supposed to live where you happy. And if two motherfucking houses make you happy, going on. Because two houses would make my ass happy. I get bored with this motherfucker. I'd love to have another one to go to. Absolutely. I just think that's fabulous. So I was like grinning and smiling the whole way through that whole thing. But the, her boys look good too. They're growing up. They're getting, getting tall and carrying on. I was like, all right, y'all cool. Um, and they seem happy. They really do. They seem happy. Child and Cecil look like he'd be happy having a little break from Simone and her loud mouth. And vice versa, because when they showed that bitch in the house by herself, she was just happy with her legs crossed up in a bubble bath. <laughs> I, I'm bothered with nobody screaming and running around the house. So, that's that. Um, let's see. Quad, Quad had actually went over to uh, Toya's house to visit and had to cook. She invited her over to eat and Quad had to cook. Because Toya so, thinks she did, she's a child. She's ridiculous. But I mean, I, if you're dealing with an idiot like Toya, you should actually expect to go ahead and cook your own food. Because ain't no need that bitch giving you tomain poison with her dumb ass. Just go on over there and do the shit yourself. But they talked about the invites to Lisa's party. And um, Toya was shocked after she threw the shady shit out there. Girl, did you get an invitation? She said, yes, I did get an invitation. Are you going? Yes, I'm going to go. She says, you know, it's a small community. We still got to see each other. It is what it is. It's water under the bridge. Me and that bitch will never be friends. But it's okay. I'll see her. I said, okay, Quad. So that was that. Now, Darren and Lisa see them talking. It is apparent. This baby shit is Lisa Nicole Cloud. Darren don't want no baby. It ain't about her. It ain't about her health. It ain't about none of that shit. Darren don't want no baby. You understand? He don't want a baby. Not at all. And there's, like I said, <clears throat> too many health risks and all that, but he ain't. He wasn't really fucking with me at Darren don't want a motherfucking baby. And I understand it. So, that's that. Let's go to the party. First things first. Okay, so you're having a party, and this is all your personal friends. Tell me why you needed models to walk around in your clothing. Because now you're trying to market. Because you're always in the midst of network marketing of some type in some form and fashion. Girl, take a day off. You don't need to have models walking around in your gowns amongst your guests trying to model on the slide. You know, they're trying to market on the slide to your people. So there's like three girls walking around in gowns looking out of place. And then I'm looking at the shit she got on. <laughs> Where are you going, honey? Where are you going? And it's a cocktail party. And it was kind of, you know what, let, let me do this, let me say this. It's a cocktail party, okay? So, I, I kind of, if you're that bitch, then it's understandable. But Lisa Nicole Cloud, you're really not that bitch. Or are you? See, because I got kind of caught in my own thing there. Now, she had on this red, I thought it was a dress at first, but it wasn't. It was a gown, like a gown with a train and all this stuff. Red. And it had fur on it. She was completely and totally overdressed. There are some people who can actually carry off being overdressed. Okay? It can happen. And it not be an issue. Um, the Diana Rosses of the world. Hell, the Beyonce's of the world. These are people we see them in gowns and stuff all the time. 
So if Diana Ross, Joan Crawford, when she was still living, if Joan Crawford threw a cocktail party and walked around in a gown, nobody would have even paid it any mind because that's Joan. Joan's that bitch. Joan just put on a gown and go downstairs and have breakfast. You know, but that was her. Lisa, that ain't you. Or is it? Or is it? Because I had to rethink it. Because I was actually saying this to say Sean Bradley. We were talking and I was like, she's ridiculous. Like, why does she have that gown on? And I'm like, stop. Because that's kind of my other persona. I wear a lot of gowns and stuff. And we just came back off the SLVS. And I did. I had a gown on during SLVS, and the SLVS was a dress any way you want to dress, but that's my persona, so it was no big deal, so the whole time that I actually was walking around with this gown, with the train and all that, nobody, I didn't look out of place because that's my persona, but I didn't even keep it on the whole time, I switched clothes, I switched out into something different, but I would have been able to get away with it because, again, that's kind of what I do. I'm a performer, and I perform, and that's the only reason why I actually had all that on. Other than that, I had two other outfits on. But I fought back, and I said, no, Sean, wait a minute. I got to go back. Lisa always has a gown on. She really does. She always has a gown on, and it's always something from her collection. So she's a walking billboard. And to be a walking billboard is cool. But you don't just make gowns. You make other stuff. You make cocktail dresses. So, I don't know. And maybe it's because, maybe it's because the gowns are always bad. Maybe that's it. Because her line of clothing for me is very much like an upscale rainbow. Where they sell gowns or something. It's very um Instagram-ish. Kinda. It just it just don't be right. It just don't be right. Cause like, where are you going with that fur on there? She just looks ridiculous. She looks ridiculous. And everybody's everybody's confessionals kept saying she looked like a Christmas stocking and different stuff like that. It just was cartoonish or something. So maybe that's it. Maybe if they were good gowns, it would be cool. Shit, I don't know. I'm giving myself a headache. Y'all tell me what y'all think down in the comments. But I just, I'll just say persona. Her persona ain't holding up to the shit that she's doing. And, and I, I'm just gonna go there. Her persona ain't holding up to the shit she's doing. The dress would have been ridiculous, but not as bad if it hadn't been a gown. If it had been like a, a knee, you know, above the knee for fuck up. It would have been better. Just ridiculous. Anyway, I just spent enough time on that. Moving the fuck on. Okay, so um child, she making this damn announcement about her being having this baby child. Quad looked over because Quad that missed that old thing. She looked over like, what? Child, when Quad said, that's a double, honey. You got this woman that's over 40 that you got to try to get pregnant. That's one thing you're going to have to do. Then you got to convince a man with the traveling pants to be the one to get you pregnant. Honey, that's a double. I said, oh, oh, oh what? Bitch. Oh, horrible. Oh, 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 oh. Not the man with the traveling pants, honey. The traveling pants with the uh, butt out, honey. So we heard, honey. Allegedly, allegedly, honey. But out jeans, Darren. Go on, girl. Anyway, and then this was struck me strange. How good were y'all paying attention? Did you all see Chris? Because I saw Chris. Now you're saying Chris who? Loving hip hop. Atlanta, Chris. Mimi's girlfriend, Chris. Because I saw her at the party. Did you? Over at Lisa's house, honey. Anyway, leave it in the comments if you've seen her. Because I saw her and I hit the button. I said, ooh. And ran, I ran it back. 
that that's that motherfucking press. Darren, you come up looking more and more suspect every time you and that damn Lisa. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so they go on. Now, they're sitting around, and the first thing, this is where I've said I had a problem with Eugene. The fuck's going on with Eugene? Eugene, you didn't turn out to be some old shady queen, Annie. I'm always taking up for Eugene. Eugene first going to say, what's up with the Amazons at the door? Now, I know good and well, Eugene. I know good and well your ass ain't reading nobody about no body image and you sit up in there looking like Grimace. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because there wasn't a goddamn thing wrong with those girls at that door modeling those dresses for the Lisa Nicole Cloud collection. The only thing they had wrong was the dresses from the Lisa Nicole Cloud collection. Because every last one of them bitches was built. And you're not. They looked vibrant. You didn't look as vibrant as you would, as you, you could, honey. You reading with your fat ass. I said, no, you're not. Then, when they get to sitting down there, Toya starts up. See, I, me personally, I'd have asked Toya and Eugene to get the fuck out. I'd have put them out. Toya starts out telling the girl that her party's boring. Where's the music? Why ain't people dancing? Let's turn up. When you said in your confession before you got there, bitch, you was there for free liquor and food. Because your ass is broke and owes the IRS $9 million, bitch. So you over there wanted to be a different type of party. It wasn't even posed to be a party like that with the turn up and liquor flowing and all that. This woman's about having a baby, so why would she be getting drunk? Oh, I finally found the wine. And it... Bitch, you and your husband that came over here scavenging, you broke motherfucker. Mess, 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 mess. But I'd have put them out. And then they started, they started the whole conversation. They really dug in to the whole conversation about how they didn't need to have their baby. And at one point, Eugene was going in about age and this, that, and the other, and how, um, you know, you see people who have, parents, who have kids at this age, and they look like they put the kids as grandparents and shit. And Lisa said, hey, hey, now I'm taking offense to that. He didn't even apologize. He just kept right on, well, I'd have put them two motherfuckers out. Little Ugly and Grimace would have had to go. They would have had to go. Heavily in her two-faced ass, she sat over there. You First, you tell people that you was going to be the baby's godmother. Then you turn around agreeing with Toya and her. You two-faced it, blockhead bitch. I said, oh, my God, I'm just sitting there looking at this shit. Then they try to drag Jackie, and Jackie like, mm-mm, mm-mm. There are some risks, you know, with things. But everybody do what they want to do. Jackie, you know, Jackie's too charismatic for you to ever pull her into some shit. But now my Simone, Simone, I'm going to need you to shut all the way to fuck up and have a seat in the motherfucking fuck section, as my girl Tiki says. Because you were out of order. And the thing is, Simone, whenever Quaz said, you know, they're going to do what they want to do. And I don't understand why we're talking about this. Simone jumped on Quaz and was like, she was going in. What we should be talking about is what you're going to do. What's it going to take before you give your husband a baby? You've done everything. You wanted a career. You Everything, everything that Simone said to Quad would never have been a problem had it been Simone and Quad sitting down having a conversation. Everything she said had it been Simone, Quad, and Jackie sitting down for a conversation, it would have been a problem. But in there, well, amongst these freaks and vultures, are you serious, Simone? Girl, you, you just don't, she has no filter. She just doesn't know when not to. Like, damn, Simone. And they'll, they're going to fix it, I'm sure. They're going to fix it because Quad loves Simone, and Simone loves Quad and Eugene. But that's Simone. When she loves you, she loves you hard. She really does. She don't mean no harm. She really don't. Um, but in the midst of what she was doing, she embarrassed them. 
is what she did. She embarrassed him. And of course, you know, Quant, once she got embarrassed and she got on defensive, she told her, I'm like ready to rip your motherfucking face off right now. You need to shut up. You know, this is not, you know, she's like, I'm done. You know, because first she was answering it and rebutting it. Like, honey, I'm not running away from life. I'm trying to set up for life. I'm trying to do this where it will be easy for us to do. And she's going on and on. I said, I, I said, Simone, you wrong, baby. You wrong. And like I said, had it been in their small circle of friends, what she said would have been an issue. But amongst the vultures, it didn't come off good at all. And Simone was sitting there. She's going to be crying again because she just sat over there and opened up her mouth and said the wrong thing in front of these goons. But I, I, I'm more than sure that Quad and Simone are going to fix it. And I hope Quad don't get too mad because Simone does love that she loves her. She loves them both. Her and her goddamn her and Jane. Um Jane, not Jane. Why did I say Jane? Child. Her and, and Dr. G. Lord have mercy. Um Yeah. I don't know why I kept calling Dr. G Dr. G um Jane. But anyway. Eugene need to be thrown out. Eugene and Toya, they need to be thrown out. Dr. G and Quad are actually owed an apology, Simone, and you need to get on it. You were wrong. Absolutely wrong. All right. Anyway, so that's basically it. That's all I got for this. It was an interesting opening, and we ain't even got to that motherfucker Mariah. So we'll have to see what's going to work. I ain't going to judge her yet. I'm gonna, we're going to wait and see when she comes into the program. I'm going to give her the clean slate like I gave everybody else. I'm everybody else that failed, Mariah. Let's see what you get. I can pretty much tell you, but let, let's wait and see what you get, girl. Hey, Mariah. <laughs> anyway, later, y'all.